and I apologize for being late. I just came from a library meeting over in Smithtown, and Senator Laval is absolutely right. I would give him an answer like that, but he doesn't understand the translation is, when I say I'm thinking about it, what I really mean is, I haven't asked Owen how I should vote on this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I think it, I agree with Senator Laval on everything he said, but most notably, the fact that you would take the time to honor him. And, you know, we all have a considerable length of tenure in office now. I'm the, the least senior, but I had 26 years working with Owen. Owen served with my father as well, so we've known uh, each other for quite some time. And here are some basic thoughts. He is a gentleman through and through. He's a very principled man with, I think, extraordinary integrity. He's never wavered from that. And Senator Laval is right. Um, the beauty and part of the simplicity of working with Owen is you always know where you stand. And I, when I think about his tenure in office, you can talk about marine science, you can talk about land, water, air, whatever it may be. I believe that Owen has been a, a lot in the mold of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, long before it was fashionable, Teddy Ro Roosevelt was a conservationist. And he was the quintessential environmentalist before any, anyone knew what an environmentalist was. And I've watched, and from the start of Senator Johnson's career, I think he has done an extraordinary job in terms of protecting our environment, protecting our waters, and still finding that balance as a sportsman and a fisherman, and somebody, he's got a farm upstate, you know, he, uh, he practices what he preaches, and we are all, frankly, better off for it. There are aspects of his personality and how he does things that may not always be apparent to people who work in a facility like this, but I can tell you through and through, you want somebody on your team, you want somebody just like Senator Johnson, because he will listen, he will nudge you, you know, he'll poke you every now and then, but justifiably so. So uh, I agree with Senator Laval, we have been very fortunate to have him as our colleague, as our mentor, as our friend, and as the dean of our delegation. And the beauty for all the people in this room is, his leadership has helped all of you, and by extension, our entire community here on Long Island and across the state of New York. We shouldn't forget that. So, Senator Johnson, I add my voice to congratulations and thank you, Bill, and everyone for doing this. Thank you, Senator Flanagan. Now I'd like to invite uh, uh, the director of the DEC Marine Resources Division, Jim Gilmore. And then the former director, uh, Gordon <laughs> <laughs> Calvin. Dean uh, Zhang, Bill Wise, thank you so much for inviting me to come today to say thank you to someone who's been such a big part of my career and, and so supportive of uh, the department, uh, our Marine Resources Program. And, uh, and through them, the state's marine fisheries over the years. I'm really honored to be here and, uh, and, and, and grateful for this opportunity to say thank you to, to my colleague and friend, Senator Johnson. Uh, I started as Marine Resources Director in November of 1982. Uh, and within six months, we had uh, hundreds of people all over New York State uh, getting sick from eating shellfish and three states uh, boycotting our shellfish products as a result. Uh, we had a new administration submit a budget, its first, that uh, put the Marine Resources Program's budget at zero. We had legislation sponsored by uh, a veteran senator from Long Island and a young assembly member from Long Island to implement new management measures for striped bass that was just a little bit controversial. You missed that one, Bill. Yeah. And, I left that one for you. And we had an invitation to the new director for an appearance at a hearing on marine fisheries with a whole laundry list of issues by the chairman of the Senate subcommittee on the Long Island Marine District, somebody I didn't know, but uh, I guess I got to know pretty quickly. And uh, so, you know, so six months later, what happened? What happened was that the budget got restored, 
thank you, Senator Johnson, with a little bit of extra to help us engage some additional resources to address those shellfish sanitation problems, and I think we did so pretty effectively with that help. Uh, we had a new administration supporting legislation that was controversial, that became enacted, and that we believe led to the successful uh, or contributed along with our interstate partners to the su successful restoration of, of an abundant striped bass resource that has supported uh, excellent fishing uh, right up and down until the present time. And we had our first hearing and it was entertaining and it was fun and it was my first opportunity to meet the senator uh, and, and to get to know the person that helped our programs in so many ways. and and. And so that was the first of many long experiences, and as Bill has pointed out uh, in the two senators, I think uh, literally many dozens, if not hundreds of bills have been uh, uh, introduced, shepherded, and enacted to assure the conservation and management of our marine fisheries and their habitats by Senator Johnson. A lot of those bills were introduced at the request of the department or as governor's program bills, um, and we didn't always agree on what to do with those bills once we send them over. Uh, but no matter who the governor was, I think, over the years, and no matter who the commissioner of DEC was, if, if something needed to get done and we could convince Senator Johnson it was important, he found a way to help work with us to get the right thing done legislatively to assure that our fisheries were going to be effectively managed and their habitats were going to be effectively conserved. Uh, the other speakers this morning have also spoken of Senator Johnson's involvement in interstate processes. We served together on the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission for nearly 25 years. Senator Johnson, over the years, over his entire career, has been a big supporter of interstate cooperation, working together with our colleagues in other states. He has an exemplary record of working with members of the legislatures of other states, and not a lot of people know that, but he really has been very involved in that over the years. In, in a broader arena than in marine resources. But in, in the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, he has been, I can assure you, one of the legislative members who has been most supportive and most involved uh, and, and uh, uh, a, a leader among his peers in the commission for the years he's been there. And as Bill pointed out, he has given us the gift of some really great staff folks to work with that, that, that uh, you know, that doesn't happen with a lot of the other states. We don't get the level of staff support from the legislative side of the commission that we have gotten from New York. It's been very helpful uh, with, with Dominic, uh, with Jennifer, and with Brian for these many years. So I thank him for that contribution as well, Senator. I think it was at the commissioner's, commission's 50th anniversary meeting back in Baltimore about 13, 14 years ago when we, the New York delegation met and I told uh, Senator Johnson, Larry Cantwell, who was our other commissioner at the time, that I thought we needed to support federal legislation that would put some teeth behind the, the, the interstate management decisions that the states made together. Um, and the consequences of not doing that seemed to be inappropriate both for our marine resources and also potentially in terms of, of having the federal government doing our job for us, which none of us wanted. He didn't like it. He wasn't real, wasn't real happy with that idea, but we talked it through, and we came up with an approach that we could support and advocate that uh, enabled us to support that legislation, to support legislation here at home that would carry out effectively and led to many things, including the creation of the Marine Resources Advisory Council. and, and uh, a framework for fisheries management <clears throat> and importantly it supported it also supported a much stronger role for the legislative and citizen members of the commission and the commission's decision making which i wasn't real crazy about back at that time but senator johnson and larry persuaded me that that was the way to go and looking back on it i think i haven't regretted a day of it really was the right way to go so i i have appreciated his leadership his mentorship and his support uh, for our programs and for our marine fisheries for these many years. And 
once again, Senator, thank you for all you've done. And thank you for being a friend of uh, the department and a friend of mine. Appreciate it very much. I get to clean up now. Okay. Um, just to add a few words, and, and I'm honored to, to speak today, Senator. Uh, you've been, a, as everyone said, you've been a true friend of marine resources and uh, a lot of issues. There's, I think, three words that, uh, that, that sum you up in my mind is that you've been a leader, you've been a champion, and you've been a hero for all of us for many, many years. Um, I know Bill and Gordon have covered your history. In fact, when I was asked to speak some words, I was wondering if I could come up with anything, and then I had pages and pages and pages of stuff you've accomplished over the 40 years, which is just incredible. Um, and I'll just add a few words about, I'm now the ASMFC commissioner and Brian sits, whatever, and it's been very easy because of the road you paved for, for me to take over that position, and Gordon also, so it's been uh, a lot easier than other, other commissioners starting out. Um, and some of the legislation you've passed over the years is now coming together. The EPF now will be funding a lot of the ocean initiative things we're doing. So all of those legislations that were done now are, are kind of like working together. So it's another you know, feather in your cap. And just you've been a great friend in terms of getting things passed and also things that maybe are gonna hurt marine resources or whatever, kind of slowing those down and making them make sense. So we really appreciate that. Um, and besides being a friend of, uh, of marine resources and the agency, um, the um, senator has been my senator for uh, most of my life. I'm a Babylon Town resident, so um, he's been a, a real hero to all of us in the Babylon in Babylon Town. Countless things he's done for for the town of Babylon, and, and including uh, I, I can't even go. It'll take me hours to go through it. But he, last Saturday, for any of you who are around, he did his beach cleanup, which he's done every year, and it was just a, a, a terrific event that he's you know really get out there and got a great. You know, it gets great weather. Um, one thing, Senator, if you ever think about your accomplishments, my kids know who their state senator is. Um, if I say Owen Johnson, and since they were little, they know who you are. And I think that's rare, because how many of your 10, 12-year-old kids know who their state senator is? But you've been a, a, you know, a real champion for them also. Um, I'd like to just add what uh, Bill had said before also. I think you've had a great ability to pick great staff. Uh, over the years, working with Brian at ASMFC, Gordon Canary, Dominic Giacangelo. We were classmates at St. John the Baptist High School years ago. Uh, Jennifer F. Lorenzo. I was in her class here, and you just had great people. And then Jay Bolton and Albany, uh, just great people to work with and get you know, your jobs done. So just you know, hats off to them also. Um, the only parting shots I really have is we've been spoiled, uh, both in marine resources, at the agency and as, and as residents in, in uh, for the Babylon town. And I guess our only concern is that we really had a true American original all these years. And I guess a little bit of our concern, we haven't really had to pay much attention to what was going on because you've been on guard for us for so many years. And I guess the future is a little unclear as to what's going to happen. So um, we're all gonna miss you a great, a great amount. Um, you've been a leader, a champion, and a hero. Uh, congratulations on a, on a well-deserved retirement. And now, go spend time with your family since everything we've benefited by, I think they suffered a bit. So enjoy them now, and congratulations on a well-deserved retirement. Thank you, Gordon and uh, Jim. The next speaker is uh, Cornelius Schrenk. Assistant Director of the New York Sea Group. <laughs> I'm not really going the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to grab that. Here who are uh, happy to be here and thank you also. 
So it's been a pleasure for Sea Grant to work with you over the years. Our interactions with you and your staff have always been very interesting. You've always been very interested and enthusiastic about what Sea Grant does. Um, and uh, what we do to help New York agencies and communities. We've greatly valued our marine uh, extension program, our marine education efforts, and our competitive research programs. So um, it's been our honor to serve you and the state of New York and the residents of New York in that capacity. So just a number of you have already heard or you've already heard a little bit about some of the things that the Senator has been involved in, but in terms of Sea Grant, some of the issues he's helped us with include lobster and marine animal diseases, the South Shore Estuary Reserve Program and your support for that, uh, the marina and recreational boating industries, the fishing and shellfishing industries, our NEMO Nonpoint Source Education for Municipal Officials Program is another one that you've been interested in also through the South Shore Estuary Reserve Program and the New York Seafood Council and other things. So clearly marine issues and their importance to New York have been a very high priority for him and something for which we can all be very thankful for. So New York Sea Grant, as many of you know, is a program that's designed to help the people of New York. But, and it's part of NOAA and it's part of a national network. And its funding base is federal, so it's a federally, federally funded program through NOAA, but because of its specific relevance to the state, um, there's a 50% match requirement that the state needs to provide for us to get, actually even obtain the federal dollars. So without budget support through SUNY, New York Sea Grant would not be able to bring those federal financial resources to New York. And the senator has been instrumental in trying in bringing those dollars to New York Sea Grant and um, to actually allow even the New York Sea Grant program to exist in New York. Without state resources, there would be no New York Sea Grant program. Um, so it's been you know, your your help in assuring that uh, state funding base has been essential, and you've gone further. And there have been many member items that of additional monies that have allowed New York Sea Grant to grow and expand into territories and programs and projects and issues that we would not have been able to do without your support. So the two for one return uh, on the state investment is good for New York and the stakeholders uh, that New York Sea Grant serves and we thank you for recognizing that. So we hope your retirement continues in your retirement, you continue to follow the developments of marine resources, and I can't imagine that you won't be following them. Um, but we also hope that you can enjoy your family and relax a little bit. Um, we want to congratulate you on your uh, career that's done wonderful things to enhance and protect our use and enjoyment of Long Island's marine resources. So thank you. of appreciation for you that I'd like to give her. Do you want to, shall he come up or read? I think we'll, I'll just give it to him here. We'll read it out though. Sure. 
Thank you, Cornelius. As Bill Weiss said earlier, Senator Owen Johnson was fundamental to help us establish the Marine Disease Lab and secure the funding along with Senator Ken Lavelle. So now I'd like to invite uh, uh, Alan Hassan to come forward to say something about the Marine Disease Lab. Thank you, Dean Zhang. I will try to be short and concise. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind and the mind of all people here at SOMA that the contributions and the leadership of Senator Jensen were instrumental to the establishment, the establishment of the Marine Animal Disease Laboratory. I just want to highlight some of the things we, we do, uh, give you some uh, information about what this effort served for. I think Senator Johnson was, uh, had the vision that science is, is here to serve society, and the establishment of this lab, I believe, is really a central part of serving society. What we do in this lab, we have in the state legislature text that I, I read, our mission is in three <coughs> components, research, teaching and education, and service to the community. And I think this is what we've been doing in the last 10 years since the establishment of the lab. In terms of research, we added to the support provided by the state by seeking external research funding from federal agencies and state agencies. And I think we did uh, find doing so, uh, the production by our lab exceeded 60 peers with paper in the last 10 years. In terms of education, in addition to our class teaching, we also provide hands-on education to future scientists that will be uh, helping answering challenging questions in the 21st century. <laughs> Major question we are facing is changing environment is truly affecting society. Beyond uh, natural resources, there are many things that can be thought on for, for hours and hours. The last element I would like to highlight is service. The lab has been providing service, I think, to state agencies to aquaculture communities and to fishermen as well. We work, uh, we've been working hand in hand with the New York State DC to support the heartland fisheries in New York State. We, our lab, uh, Sparehead, colleagues at my lab, Sparehead, they discovered new lobster diseases in Long Island Sound. We've been doing, uh, doing so over the last year, and we are proud of it. And I hope that Senator Johnson is proud of our accomplishment as well. Clearly, Senator, without your help, probably we would not be having here uh, Marine Animal Disease Lab staff. And on behalf of everybody in the, the lab, I would like to extend my acknowledgement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bassan. Now, uh, we have uh, gift for Senator Owen Johnson. Can I ask the Senator to come forward? Or do I open? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, good, good. Yes, so we have a plate for you, the Senator. And the, I'm going to read out the plate, maybe we can go. Yeah. Presented to the Honorable Owen H. Johnson, in honor and the recognition of your lifelong commitment to the conservation and the effective management of New York's marine resources. Your leadership on these issues for 40 years in the New York State Senate <coughs> is a legacy and a source of inspiration to those who have worked with you. Thank you from your friends and the colleagues 
two of Tom Marine and the atmospheric scientist at the Stony Brook University. I said to the Senator Lebel sitting next to me, it's kind of embarrassing uh, to come and thank me for something that I've done for myself, which, for my community, which I wanted to do, which I didn't look for any recognition, just do what I thought was the right thing for the environment, for the fisheries, for the residential fishermen, for the commercial fishermen. Try to balance all those interests and do the right thing. And that's, and with the advice of Gordon Colvin, which Many times we got this good advice, and other members of the of the staff. That uh, I think we did, as you say, accomplish a lot of things. But we did it cooperatively. We enjoyed it. It was no the only conflict I had with Senator Labelle. Sometimes I said, "You don't own all the fish, Kenny. Let, let me take care of some of them." You know? but, uh, other than that, we uh, we got along fine, and we the result was, I think good for the environment and good for the commercial and the residential people. There's a little fish for everybody out there. And uh, so to get thanks for just doing good things uh, that, I, that I recognize as good things, which was really just my opinion, but it worked out the right, right way. I, uh, I had a rowboat and I, I, I got myself friends together and they said, come on, I got a rowboat, we could go out, to, out in the bay. So I get a half a dozen friends that get in the boat and rolling out to the end of the creek. All of a sudden, the water's about this high from the going over the boat. Oh my God, there's too many people in this boat. I didn't realize that. Well, that was one of the, everything that worked out okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, were all, we all survived, but. Was this last week or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm back in the memory book. <laughs> So then I decided one time, I said, I think I'll, I'll sail this thing. So I got a, two by, a couple two by fours, two by threes, some sheets and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I made a sail for my boat. I put the sail on the boat, got out to the end of the creek, and the wind was blowing, it was great. And I went right across the bay, right through the flats, right to the far as you could go without um, hitting land. And uh, then I realized that I can't, I gotta take that thing down because I can't get back to it. It's only going one way. I was a kid, what can I do? So, uh, anyhow, I, I rode back and uh, that was good exercise for me. So, so I had a lot of fun in the bay. You know, I don't know if anybody's done it, but just go out there and jump in the water by the flats. I didn't, I didn't have any goggles. Just look around what's going on there. You can't believe the light in there. I, when I saw the first seahorse, I said, my God, there are seahorses here. And all and Achilles and all sorts of fish and stuff, swimming all around. You know, I said, it was so uh, interesting and so exciting, but familiarized me with the uh, economy, with the, uh, which I say, <coughs> environment out there and the creatures that are in it. And I give it a lot more respect for those creatures and uh, for the environment. Make sure it doesn't get polluted or corrupted or overfished. Or, Whatever, a lot of life in there. Interesting for anybody to take a look at. So, I had I, I learned a lot in my days, but I didn't I didn't learn how to uh, really sail a boat. <laughs> I know the wind is your friend when it's going your way. <laughs> but anyhow, the uh, the knowledge that I gained from. Gordon Colvin and other members of the department were very helpful too. And uh, as some people had different opinions, but I, I, I appreciate the recognition. Uh, I think I tried to do what I thought was right. And I was a little thick headed sometimes, I guess. But uh, it all worked out okay. And all these people that I dealt with over the years are still my friends. And the, the environment is still getting along. And the, the commercial and residential uh, fishermen are. I'm getting along okay, so I think uh, I'm very happy to get this recognition. I don't, I don't think I deserve it. I mean, more people did more than I did, but it's nice to be here and hear from my friends. And uh, they say, for for example, that they most mostly appreciate it. So uh, I think 
I think I'm happy to be uh, recognized. I appreciate it. And, uh, and as you say, I need a little more room on my walls for the surprise <laughs> other than that. It's okay. So thank you very much. our official ceremony, we have prepared a cake for Senator Owen Johnson. So, please enjoy the cake. <laughs>